Hey friend, welcome to She's in Her Apron. Welcome to my kitchen, to my home. Today, you're gonna join us for our Sunday family dinner. I'm making pork tenderloin for dinner tonight, and we're gonna actually make this in the oven. I do have one recipe that you could make in the slow cooker. It is so good. It's garlicky and just, mm, it's so good. But today, we're gonna do one in the oven, and we're gonna roast some vegetables. It's gonna be so good. So come along with me today on our Sunday family dinner. Aprons on, let's go. I was at Costco about a week and a half ago and I bought two packages of tenderloins together. I cut the one half off, put its package in a food saver bag, took my food saver machine, sucked up the air out, and got it in the freezer. And we will use that for another family dinner another time. So we're gonna work with this one and probably about two and a half pounds and it has two loins in here. So I don't have sweet paprika like it, the original recipe calls for, but I just use paprika for this. Okay, well you need garlic powder, and I need more of that. And then onion powder. I have minced onion. We could turn these minced onions into onion powder, but I swear I have another, yep, right here, onion powder. But if I didn't have that, all I would need to do is put this minced onion into a blender, blend it up, and boom, I have onion powder. Dried thyme, thyme and dried rosemary. I'm gonna grind up this rosemary so it's a powder. Pepper. <laughs> Let's go over to the counter. We're gonna add all our seasonings in this little bowl. So we're gonna need a teaspoon of the paprika, a teaspoon of the garlic powder, a half a teaspoon of the onion powder, half a teaspoon of the thyme. Oh, and we're also gonna need salt. And this is just by taste, so, you know, we're just gonna eyeball that. And some black pepper. Now let's grind up our rosemary. And my brain is like turning off right now of what this is called. I can hear it in my head, but I cannot say it. We're gonna use this to uh, grind up our rosemary. This thing is so heavy. I'm always afraid I'm gonna drop it on my toes. What is this called again? I hear it in my head, but I can't say it. Is it a mullet and pre press, mullet? Mm -hmm. This is gonna bug me, so time out. Found this on the web for what is the stone that you use to grind herbs. Check it out. Mortar and pestle. There you go. See? You could hear it in my head, but I just couldn't get it out. You'll need a mortar and pestle. Okay, I have about a teaspoon of rosemary in here. We need about a half a teaspoon, but you're not gonna go wrong with rosemary. Oh, it smells so good. I'm not trying to get it into a complete powder, so we'll use that. Okay, we're gonna pat dry our tenderloin. If you're gonna use a roast, you'll need about three pounds of a roast. But we're gonna do tenderloins, which means this is gonna cook faster than using a roast. So I'm really gonna keep my eye on this. Take some oil, I'm using olive oil. This is actually roasted garlic um, uh, olive oil. This is so good. I either got this at Sam's or Costco, I'm not sure. But it is so good, so I'm just going to drizzle this on each. So that way we can get all those great herbs to stick. Okay. The one thing that I love about working with tenderloins is that two usually come in a pack. So if you're a smaller family, you've got two meals right there in a package. That is gonna make great leftovers. Okay, we're gonna rub the seasoning on the pork loin. Why do I keep calling it pork loin? Sheesh, it's pork tenderloin. You get my drift, right? What were Sundays like growing up in your homes? Did you have family dinners? We were always at the table together. My grandmother lived with us, so she was always with us. And then my aunt was with us on and off. And then if she wasn't living with us, she uh, would come over on Sundays. And we always had family dinner, always. Okay, once that's done, we're gonna heat up a pan with some olive oil and we're gonna sear this. So let's bring this over to our stove. I don't have a pan big enough for these long guys. These are big. So I might just have to do these in sections. Mm 
Oh, there we go. It curved much better. We're just gonna brown up the, all of the sides. I'm gonna turn my fan on my microwave. Okay, once I do that, I'm gonna put it on a baking sheet with parchment paper. Sear the other one now. Ooh boy. Okay, we're not done yet. We're gonna put a glaze over the top. For the sauce, we're gonna need some garlic and then soy sauce. But you can use coconut aminos. But I'm gonna do soy sauce today. And then you're gonna need some honey. If you're going to measure out honey and it's gonna stick to the inside, just spray, um, spray the inside of a measuring cup and boom, it'll slide real nice. All right, I need a fourth cup of honey. And we're gonna need three tablespoons of soy sauce. I missed one. You will need a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. You'll need about four cloves of garlic minced mincer here okay we are going to reserve two tablespoons of this for our vegetables we're going to roast up some yummy vegetables so we're going to save two tablespoons for the veggies all right we're going to brush this on this smells so good you guys and it's not even in the oven yet Derek came into the kitchen he was like oh my gosh Sunday dinners, we would have roast pork, pork chops. A lot of the time though, it was an Italian meal. It was um, our Italian gravy, our sauce, we call it gravy. And we would have homemade macaroni. Uh, we would have lasagnas or eggplant parmesan or our rolled up eggplant it was so good. But Sundays were mostly the Italian dinners. Uh, what would happen is we would be at church and my grandmother who lived with us, she would make a lot of the stuff and she would get dinner all ready for us. And so sometimes depending on when church was, we would have early dinners on Sunday and then we would just nibble later. So like our, our dinners could start anywhere between two to three and then we would uh, eat leftovers in the evening. But my grandmother always started dinner for us. And we would come home from church and the house would smell amazing. All right, I have my oven preheated to 375 and this is gonna cook for 25 minutes. Now the house is gonna smell so good. I mean, it smells amazing just with it being seared. All right, 25 minutes. While this is doing its thing, I'm gonna share with you what I've got going on in the slow cooker, and then we're gonna make our yummy uh, side, which is more like a dessert. It's the pistachio salad. Oh, it's, it's like my orange jello salad, but different, it's got marshmallows. It's, so it's basically a dessert that we have as a side dish, cause why not? So, all right, well, let me share with you what I've got going on in the slow cooker as a side dish. In a previous video, I shared with you how to make macaroni and cheese in your slow cooker. And that's what I did today. And it is done, it's been off. It cooks super fast, you guys. So this time, instead of using Monterey Jack cheese, I used Asiago cheese and then sharp cheddar cheese. I was all out of block sharp cheddar cheese, but I had a bag of shredded sharp cheddar cheese. In that video where I showed you how to, the recipe to this, I was telling you how to use like real cheese, like block cheese that you could shred because the shredded cheese has a hard time melting down. Now in here, you could still see the, the string, the shreds of it. It doesn't melt as creamy. This is off, it's staying nice and warm. This took um, about an hour and a half to cook and you stir it every 20 minutes. Let's work on the veggies so they could get in the oven with the pork and then we'll make the salad because this doesn't really need to set all that much and we will be so close to dinner. From Costco, I picked up these sheep pan vegetables. So they're a lightly seasoned blend of Brussels sprouts, sweet potatoes, broccoli florets, red onion, and zucchini. So we're gonna get these on a baking sheet as well with parchment paper and we're gonna drizzle that yummy uh, glaze that we made over the vegetables. So these are gonna bake or, or roast 
These are gonna roast in a 450 degree oven. Could take 30 minutes, but I'm gonna get this in with the roast right now at 375. And when the roast comes out, then we'll crank up the heat on these. But I wanna get these in the oven. This is why I want double ovens. <laughs> I would love a double oven. I'm going to toss this together and then get this in the oven. Yum. And then the other half of that bag, uh, we could use for another meal. So that bag is going to get us two meals and probably some leftovers for lunch during the week. We're going in the pantry. This is our extended pantry. Crushed pineapple. Also to the salad, you can use fruit cocktail or even a can of mandarin oranges. I never add any other fruit than the pineapple, but today we're gonna add mandarin oranges. We're gonna make the pistachio jello salad. It's so good, you guys. So of course you're going to need some pistachio pudding and this is a 3.4 ounce box. You'll need some cottage cheese, about 16 ounces of cottage cheese. And then two of the small Cool Whips, these are eight ounces. You need about 12 to 16. So in my freezer I already had some small containers. And then you're gonna need some crushed pineapple and you can add fruit cocktail and you can add mandarin oranges and then some coconut flakes. This is all by sight, as much as you'd like. And then you're gonna need some mini marshmallows. Oh my gosh, it's so naughty and it's so good. There's so many versions of how you can make this pistachio salad. You can't go wrong, honestly. But get a large bowl because when you add the marshmallows, it grows on you. Okay, add your pistachio pudding. And then you can take your pineapple and drain some of it if you want. I'm gonna start by draining it, I always do. Because we are gonna need some of the liquid to help dissolve the pudding. But I, I haven't made this in a while and I honestly can't remember exactly how much of the juice I use. Nothing, I might be like, oh yeah, I do use all of it. I'm gonna drain the oranges, but let's dissolve this pudding in with the pineapple juice. I might end up using all of it. I don't remember. I'm doing this all from memory. I don't remember, I don't have my uh, recipe out. So it's all by memory. So if you just remember, you could just mix it with your pineapple as well. But I like to dissolve the pudding first. I don't know why. I'm always afraid it's gonna get grainy even though it doesn't. And then we're just gonna add everything else in. There's 16 ounces of cottage cheese. I like to use the small curd. That way, th those that don't like cottage cheese, they're not gonna mind this. And how do I know this? Because my aunt, one of my aunts, uh, she was like, I don't like cottage cheese. And I made, at a family gathering, the orange jello salad and the pistachio salad. And she's like, I don't like cottage cheese. So she would not try this salad. So I didn't tell her that the orange salad had cottage cheese in it because at the time I didn't like cottage cheese and you couldn't tell and I loved it. So I told, I lied to her and said that the orange jello salad didn't have it in it. She ate it, she loved it and then I told her and then she tried the pistachio and she loved it. So, <laughs> I'm gonna drain, open up my mandarin oranges and drain that. I'm just gonna eye this coconut. I'm not sure how much I wanna put in. This is unsweetened. So I'm just gonna maybe put two kinda handfuls in. I don't know. That looks good. Oh, it smells good. Then you'll need two cups of the mini marshmallows. So one cup. So it's like a Wardolf, is it World Wardolf? I can never say it, salad. Okay, now we're going to take our Cool Whip, or you can make your own cream, like whip topping put in here. Cause I know you can't get Cool Whip in other countries, so you can make your own. And if you need Cool Whip really quick, out of your freezer and if your oven's on, just sit this on top of your oven. That's what I had to do, this one's still a little frozen in the center, but it'll work. All right, mix this all together. That's all you gotta do and you're ready to serve. You could set this for a little while in your fridge before you serve it up. You could serve it up in individual cups and add a cherry on top. But I love this salad and I haven't had it in a while. We mostly have the orange jello salad a lot. 
I shared that with you on my Easter video, which we forgot to serve. Uh, so we had it the next day with a yummy roast beef dinner. I'm just gonna wipe down the bowl, get this wrapped up and put it in the fridge until we're ready to serve, which is so soon. Yum. Yeah, yeah. What do I do? See what happens when you're cooking dinner? They go scavenging for food. We're gonna be eating in like 10 minutes. So if you have followed me for years, you may remember when the kids were little that they had snack bins, but I also put a numbered padlock on our uh, pantry door. We they had. <laughs> My kids didn't starve, it was locked during times like this when mommy is trying to cook dinner and they're hungry and they want to go snack. If you have little ones and you want them to stay out of the pantry while you're cooking dinner, that's my tip for you. Go get a coated padlock. It worked out great. And then when it was over, it was unlocked. But when mommy was cooking dinner, that thing was locked down. Oh my goodness, this is done. It's beautiful. So what I'm gonna do is just wrap it in aluminum foil and let the uh, veggies crisp up and then we'll be eating dinner. I'm back to making homemade bread. So I'd made some the other day. Oh, it's so good. It is a mixture of hard white wheat and um, baking flour. So we're gonna have some slices of bread that they can butter uh, for dinner. Homemade bread smells so good. So when I ground up my own uh, wheat basically, using the Wonder Mill. I'm in love with it. I've been wanting to try theirs for a long time. It's supposed to be quieter, it is. I mean, the machines are still loud, but once you get the grain into the machine, it is actually much quieter than the other two grain uh, machines that I have that grind up your grain. What I love about this one is there's a setting where you can grind your powder even, like, even more uh, finely. So if you're doing like pound cakes and things like that, so it, it worked beautifully. So I just love homemade bread. All right, so we have bread for sandwiches tomorrow and uh, bread for dinner. So I'm gonna put this on a plate and they can butter their own slice. And I'm just testing the internal temperature. Now you can make this all a one pan sheet pan dinner. You could put this pork on a bigger sheet pan and then at this point, you would, what you would do is you would tent it and then roast the veggies. If this was a, a roast, these are tenderloin, so we've gotta be very careful. I know we want our internal temperature, I believe at 145. Would you look at that? Oh, it smells so good. I can't wait to dig in. So we're gonna slice these up, plate up, and get the food on the table, and it's dinner time. We're gonna keep the other tenderloin um, not cut up so it could stay nice and moist. And now I'm going to drizzle this on here. Oh yes, get in my belly. Yum. On Sundays, we will have family dinner with extended family or just dinner with us. We noticed that as we have, sh our family has shrunk from four kids to two, we are not eating at the table as much and it's actually driving me crazy. So in fact, the last time we sat down at this table was Easter. We just get used to like going and sitting on the couch around the coffee table, which is fine, we're together, but the boob tube's on, you know, the TV's on. That's what we're trying to do, especially on Sundays, which is easy to do on Sundays, but I remember growing up, family dinner every night was at the kitchen table. There might be one or two of us not there because of you know, a game, someone had a game or something. We're trying, even though our schedule with two kids, it's crazy with their schedule, we're, we're trying to get back to the table and not on the couch. It's, it's good to be together. It's good talking electronics mm -hmm. off. So on Sundays, we will eat by ourselves here and then with extended family. The extended family will come over and we'll be together mm -hmm. with aunts and uncles and cousins. So I went on Instagram, I put a thing on my stories saying what was your traditions for Sunday dinners? Like growing up and now, what do you do? And I got a lot of responses. Linda says, all family, big dinner at her table. The only time we could all sit together and enjoy good food. Yeah, sometimes Sunday is like the only day that you could really do that. 
Stephanie says, before I was 10, roast potato salad. By age 10, sandwiches, now whatever I can afford. Nicole says, we ate at the table as a family, have conversations, talk now, it's different. Telsagi says, did not do family dinner other than holidays, single mom that worked many jobs. Yep, it's, sometimes it's hard. But you know, when you can get together and just talk, it's always good, right? Even if it's in the car. I've had great conversations with my kids in the car. That's where I think they open up more. A Steph says, after church, we went to my grandparents' house and always had an early supper. Yeah, we would do early supper as well. Sundays were always more formal, usually something like pork roast or a ham dinner. I think it's fun to make Sundays a little more formal. I'm old fashioned like that. C Vicaro says, Sunday dinners were held at mama's house, grandma, usually chicken, mashed, probably mashed potatoes and salad. Yum. Ooh, my friend. Heather, she says, we always do a big dinner, roast and potatoes, and knelt around the table to pray. Oh, she also says, never had anyone over. It was just our family took naps and hung out all night. Yeah, it's fun. We love naps on Sunday. Oh, and we play games at the table on Sundays. We did that a lot when the kids were younger too. Uh, we would do Yahtzee, card, card, tons of card games, dice games. All right, so Re English says, fried chicken, green beans, or baked beans with mashed potatoes and gravy. Yum. Sundays, same as any other night, always ate around the table and mom cooked from scratch. Yum, such good memories. Sundays for us are leftovers, it makes it easier on me. Oh, that is smart, especially if you go to church on Sunday. My mom baked, this is from Christine, my mom made a baked chicken every Sunday night for years and years. Oh, it's those traditions. And now when you smell that, you think of her, right? And you think of Sundays. Ellen says, we had roast and veggies every Sunday. My mom made dinner every night, eating out was a treat. Oh yeah. Bailey says, grandma would always get a rotisserie chicken and Bob Evans potatoes from Walmart. Oh, those are good. Giggle2123 said, fried chicken on Sundays after church. Oh, fried chicken. I love fried chicken. And Beep Beep 11 says, we always ate on TV trays and watched the Disney movie that came out on ABC on Sunday nights. Remember mm -hmm. Sunday Disney movies? Yep. Oh my gosh. That's where I fell in love with The Parent Trap. Love that movie with Haley Mills, the original. Like, yes, oh my gosh, so good. So over the years, we have shared our kitchen table with you all, and there have been some really funny moments at the dinner table. We, we have some very good, like, touching moments, and we have some very inappropriate moments at our table. <laughs> we, we talk about everything. Our home is pretty open. Any topics on the table, and we'll talk to the kids. Yep. <laughs> Find questions, ask your kids questions, get them talking, it's so fun. I went on Pinterest and I found lots of questions that you can ask and go around the table. You can make them as intriguing as you want, everyone can pick something out of the bowl and get it everyone talking and then you get to know each other more. One is, what is your favorite time of the day and why? Mine is bedtime, <laughs> when my head gets to hit the pillow. Say something nice about the person to your right. Boston, you did very well driving to church today. You did awesome driving today. Good job. Say something nice about the person across from you. Bailey, you're like the sweetest thing. You're nice to everybody. Everybody loves Shaylee, everybody. There's one really good question. What would you like to be doing 10 years from now? And you're gonna be a how old in 10 years? 22. You're gonna be 25, you're gonna be 22. How is that possible when we're gonna be like 29 again. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. What do you want to be when you grow up and why? A movie star and a singer? Yep. I want to be a grandpa. <laughs> yeah. He wants to be a grandpa. You want to be a grandma too. We got to think of a word that's not grandma. <laughs> I want to be a diesel mechanic or what? Oh, my. A diesel, me diesel, diesel mechanic? Diesel mechanic or welder. Or welder. We have a daughter who's married and when that time comes, it'll be glorious. Question is, what do you want to be called, Graham Graham? I know, what do you want to be called? You said Pops. Pops. What about, what do you want, Graham Graham? I'm, no, Graham? I'm, used, I'm just used mm -hmm. to calling my grandmother's Grammy growing up, so I could be Grammy. To Bring be it on for me, I don't care. <laughs> I just want grandbabies. <laughs> One question was, if you were an animal, what would you be? Mr. Toodles picked first an elephant and then a tortoise. He wants a tortoise, so all he would have to do is like the big ones, the big live on the beach, make babies, be in the ocean. <laughs> yep. 
And then Boston said a parakeet. Because, well, parakeet right? just lives long. Then you can say whatever you want. People can't get mad at you. They just laugh. And then Shaylee said a cheetah and a, no, well, uh, you said that first, but a dolphin. A lion, cheetah, tiger, dolphin, cat. Oh, so you're pretty much good with anything. Yeah. I have no clue. Like this question kind of freaks me out. A, a peacock. A peacock. <laughs> Beautiful and feisty. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind being a fly on someone's wall for a day. That would be cool. For your next family dinner, try this pineapple casserole. It's super easy to throw together and it complements your next ham dinner. Click this cook with me video here to see how we put this dinner together. I'll meet you over there. Toodles. Toodles. Bye.